It is my pleasure to introduce you to spoken word poet, Sanyal. Thank you. This first piece that I'm going to do, I wrote this piece during a time when I was a little discouraged in the dating game. So I wrote this to encourage brothers as well as uplift women. I am woman, created from the rib of man whom God formed from dirt and sand beginning civilization. For out of my womb came man as my thighs spread wide and my hips prepared to give birth to nations. Somehow in the equation you got lost and declared me your enemy. Started sexing me, disrespecting me, and calling me out of my name. B-I-T, you know the rest, this and H-O, that, uh-uh, scratch that. I am woman, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. Hating me is hating yourself. Lest you forget you passed through these legs, from these breasts you were fed, yet these very childbearing hips you now say are too thick, along with my nose and my lips, lips, lips. As you run to other places, trying to erase this, escape this, and replace this, harboring, self-hating, degrading, emasculating, unappreciating, black families separating thoughts that consume your mind time after time. Each time you press rewind, you run and hide, cause all you see is our foremothers being raped, and right before their face, our forefathers being beat and hung, so you run and you run. But I need you to see that this thing is deeper than you and me. See, let me break this down for you slowly. A long, long time ago, it was your rib that brought me here. I am because you were. The creator knew just what he was doing because he made us in his image, which means your beauty is my beauty and our beauty is blinding. So stop rewinding and press fast forward. Scoop! If you level made you, it becomes easy to love you and even easier for you to love me beautifully because loving me is loving yourself. <laughs> Let me repeat that. If you level made you, it becomes easy to love you and even easier for you to love me beautifully because loving me is loving yourself. Then you will understand that we're not just descendants of a great heritage, but the remnant, which came from dirt, sand, a quick breath, bringing forth man, his rib, making woman from whose womb came the very nation that we should be educating. I am woman, and I stand beside every great man. So stand, man. God gave you dominion. Power is in your hands. So stop running and stand, stand, stand for yourself and for me, your woman. This next piece is entitled... My life is on the line. And I wrote this piece when I was diagnosed with lung cancer. The same day that I was diagnosed and I was going through the emotions. I gotta write, have to write, cause these lines are my life. I gotta write, have to write, cause these lines are my life. My heart pumps through my pen, pouring out my life from within. See, line after line, I'm immortalized, ink staining the pages with legacies that can't be erased, won't be replaced. But the enemy keeps trying to eradicate, eliminate, take my very being. See, looks are deceiving. From the outside, everything looks fine, due only to the fact that my faith resides inside. But hear me when I say my life is on the line because my body's being attacked on all sides. What the doctor said to me, me, made me dig deep, helped me to see that tomorrow's not promised to me. As I prepared my body to fight, I heard God say, right, I gave you this gift as your lifeline. Now that your life is on the line, right for those who don't have time, right for those who don't have faith, right for those who've lost patience, right for those who don't believe that nothing is impossible for me. Now right and release. Lung cancer, sarcoidosis, ankylosing spondylitis are the triple threats that put my life into crisis. My life is on the line. No, I don't think y'all hear me. My life is on the line. These diseases trying to kill me. I write because I have to. It's what I was chosen to do. I had to lay my life down to be God's vessel of truth. You thought this was just a rhyme? <laughs> well, it's what fuels my drive. It's keeping me alive. Each time I look in my kids' eyes, it strengthens my will to survive. Hearing my daughter on the mic is reassurance that all is right. She's the new and improved me that God brought through me as a blessing. She's a 
she's my seed, yet I'm her number one groupie. And my son, the silent warrior king, the protector who's quiet but sees everything, brings joy to this queen with a sense of urgency. As words clutter my mind, creating, escaping, allowing my soul to reawaken, climbing from the dark to the light, increasing my will to fight. I gotta write, have to write, cause these lines are my life. See, failure's not an option. Got too many people watching to see if God really exists. So my life depends on this. I won't give up. Nah, I won't give in. I'll continue to pour my life's blood through my pen. My life is on the line. No, I don't think y'all feel me. My life is on the line, but I'm claiming the victory because Jesus already healed me. Got to write. Have to write. Because these lines are my life, y'all. This last piece is entitled Testimony. And this piece I wrote during a time I had just finished my first book. And I was at work and I heard God say, write this piece and put it in the front of the book. I once knew this young lady who was into a few things that were shady. She was lost and deep in her sin. She wouldn't let anyone in. Her heart was getting hard and cold, which is what aided in making her so bold. She started stripping and selling her body, always looking for the next party. She slept with over 140 men, and when they no longer satisfied, she tried women. She had no regard for her girlfriend or her boyfriend or even her own man's friend because this lust thing was so deep within. She played out most of her fantasies, you know, like being with two or three. It seemed everything was fair game. She didn't see that this behavior was insane. She had been verbally abused and physically beat. She lost most of her self-esteem. She'd lie, steal, and cheat. She'd do whatever it took to eat. See, she had two children to feed, so she made excuses for every deed. She was pregnant seven times by seven different guys. Only two are alive. She aborted the other five. She did things to seal her own fate, like transporting weight. Boy, was she getting in over her head, committing crimes to send her straight to the feds or dead. She smoked weed morning, noon, and night. She only drank to enhance her high. She was Dr. Jekyll, Mrs. High. But if you had met her, you wouldn't know she had a dark side. But get this, she ran her own business, but she was lacking self-confidence. She got this close to what she thought was the top before everything seemed to stop. Her debt was getting out of control. She was losing her very soul. She had beauty and intelligence, but she couldn't see that Satan had decided to sift her as wheat. It all came to a crashing finality when she was hit with a dose of reality. She lost every material thing as she was forced into bankruptcy. And just as she took the pills and decided to give up, God said to Satan, that is enough. She is one of my chosen few, and I won't lose her to you. You've done all I'll let you do. Now I'm releasing her from all you've exposed her to. She'll have another chance to serve me. So from her, you must flee. I introduce you to Sanyo Jindahi. Yes, the she in this story is me, a walking testimony who should be in jail, dead or dying. But instead, God heard me crying. And it is only by God's saving grace that I am now able to save face. I am before you today, transparent in every way. God's using a wretch like me to show his people you too can be free. To God be the glory. But guess what, y'all? Satan tripped and he got caught slipping as he lost his grip and my soul escaped. No longer trapped by my mistakes. Fear gave way to truth, now I walk by faith. Although every day he sends his demons after me, searching for a trace of who I used to be, only to come up against God manifested in me. And all I had to do was believe. Same could be true for you. This is my testimony. Wow. Wow. I want to thank my guests for joining us in the studio and giving us a moment to just shut the world out and relax. And I want to challenge you in the studio to look for ways that you can take care of yourself and reduce the stress as well. Take a moment to refill, recharge, so that you can be your absolute best. Thank you for being in the tea room.